Hey, what's up guys? Today I will be showing you another 10 mistakes that players commonly make in Valheim. I got a lot of positive feedback on part 1, so thank you for that. Check it out if you haven't seen that one yet. And yeah, today I will be showing you even more mistakes that both new and advanced players will make. Let me just say like last time that you should play the game however you want, but yeah, if you avoid these mistakes then that can definitely make your experiences within Valheim even better. So let's just get right into the good stuff. Mistake number 1 not always having the rested buff applied. The rested buff is one of the best buffs in the game, if not the best, and you will see that often players will make the mistake of not having the rested buff on them. It's so good because it's also really easy to apply. So the rested buff gives you a really significant stamina regen buff and a significant health regen buff. And not only that, but there's actually also an additional huge aspect of the rested buff that the game does not tell you. Because you will also get a whopping 50% bonus to all the experience that you earn or gain in the game when you are rested. Yep, you heard that right. So why is it easy to always have it applied? Well, if you have a base, you can apply it by just resting for 20 seconds in it or sleeping in your bed and you'll get the rested bonus for 7 minutes plus your comfort level. So in this case, I have a base with comfort level 5, thus I will get a 12 minute rested buff. And you can increase your comfort level really easy actually by just building furniture. For example, if I build this scuffed chair, then it will add two more levels to my comfort. So what happens if you aren't in or anywhere near base? Well, don't worry, you can always apply the rest above. Just build a campfire. Campfire requires two wood and five stone. In other words, it requires basically nothing. Build the campfire, rest for 20 seconds and boom, you'll have the rest above here as well. If you want the rest above to last a little longer while you're on the road, then find yourself a cave and drop a campfire in there and you will have a higher comfort level here from being sheltered and thus your rest above will also apply for a longer duration. So yeah, get rested guys, it's important. Mistake number two destroying maples. What is that? Have you ever seen this structure while playing Valheim? No or not yet? Well good news, you are part of the majority of the player base. This structure is called a maple and is actually super rare, but you can definitely have it in your world or on your server. A mistake that is made often is that players do not know what this is and will either just skip it or even destroy it. Well, when you destroy it, it's gone for good and you won't get anything from it, nor can you ever rebuild it again. The maple gives you an extra comfort level. So the current limit for the comfort level is level 17 and if you build your base around a maple it's even possible to get a comfort level of 18. The maple will always spawn in the meadow so there's a good chance you can build your main base around it. Here, I've built something quickly around the maple to illustrate this. If I destroy the maple you will indeed Bruh. lose a comfort level. But no, don't do that, don't do that. The maple is also aesthetically a really bad ass structure in my opinion. And due to its rarity, you can definitely flex with it on everyone if you have it on your server. Yeah boy! Mistake number 3. Not marking things on the map. Marking things on your map is so useful because you'll always have an idea of what you can find at any given spot you already explored. For example, if I come across an ore deposit, just mark it. If you come across objects that respawn, like berries, also mark it. You can mark everything, mushrooms, thistles, etc, etc. And your map will look so much more organized and informative. You can even use abbreviations to make this process even more efficient. If I'm marking blueberries, I'll use BB instead, for example. If I'm marking raspberries, I'll use RB. And you can make this more detailed as well by, for example, putting the number of bushes that are at that particular spawn. Like here, I have three bushes, so I'll, I'll write down RB and then a three. And this way I'll know exactly what this particular spawn will give me in the future. And finally, you can also do this with portals, of course. If I'm naming a portal at my base, then just mark the other side of the portal on the map as well. Now I'll always know where this portal will bring me exactly. And having your own Google Maps, but then in Valheim, costs practically no time or effort and you'll always have a great idea of what your world looks like and if you want to find something in particular you know exactly where to go. Mistake number four, leaving your portals and other important structures unfenced or unprotected. Everything you build in the game can be attacked by monsters, whether it's your base or a portal half the world away from your base. If you get raided then your unfenced portals will be number uno on the trolls destruction list. So what do you want to do to prevent this? Well, it's really easy. Just build a fence around it or some defenses. So you make sure that you don't have to spend six hours after the fact trying to remember the names of your portal when you want to rebuild them. And this also applies to portals you have built on foreign islands. Just to make sure that they won't get destroyed by monsters, give them some protection. 
Mistake number five, not using objects as infinite light sources. So when you build a light source in your base or near your base, like the torch, for example, you will always have to refuel it every time it goes out. And let's be honest, ain't nobody got time for that. That's a thing of the past after this tip. Well, kind of, because a common mistake is that players do not use some of the objects in the game as infinite light sources, whether it's for practical reasons or just aesthetics. For example, the yellow mushroom, it gives a nice and cool yellowish light. It will give light forever and caves are full of yellow mushrooms, so it's it's also really easy to obtain them. You can make some nice designs with these mushrooms. For example, something like this, a lit up backyard, essentially. And a lot of other objects also produce light. For example, the dragon eggs. These things are huge, but also have a really good looking aesthetic in my opinion. And I really like the lighting effect of the, of the dragon eggs. Other items include the meats, like the uh, the ones that give you the uh, poison and frost resistance. And if you're really desperate, then you can even use your swamp key. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. The swamp key actually has a really cool effect as well and is a pretty strong light source with the uh, light spreading in a pretty unique way actually. My personal favorite though is definitely the Sirtling trophy that you sometimes get from killing Sirtlings because the light it gives is actually quite strong and is definitely more than just a dim light. You can definitely use them as a substitute for torches for example. And again, it looks really cool. And if you want to know, other items that give light are the uh, Stone Golem trophies. And if you're still in the very very early game, you can also use uh, Grey Dwarf trophies, even though they have a uh, very minimal light effect. Mistake number six, not being subscribed to Nizar GG. I'm just kidding guys, but no, seriously, do it. It's just one click. Let's go. Mistake number six, not hunting birds from the start. So yeah, this is a early game mistake as some people will not shoot at birds for whatever reason, but you can pretty much find birds the moment you spawn in a new world. Why do you want to hunt them down as soon as possible, you ask? Well, two reasons actually. You'll start increasing your in-game bow skill really quickly, as well as understanding how you personally have to shoot with the bow and how you need to aim, as birds are pretty small creatures, so that will definitely test your aiming and uh, shooting skills. And eventually you'll be a pro at it and 360 no scope them biatches like a pro. But the other reason, and maybe even the more important reason, is that birds drop feathers, which is a really Mimi. useful item that you will use from the early game all the way to the late game, as every single arrow after the wood arrow actually requires them when you want to craft them. So definitely try to stack on feathers. Mistake number seven. Thinking you can't put a card in a carve. So the carve is a really good ship for the Bronze Age, but it can be a bit lacking if you want to transport a lot of ore or anything else as it only has four storage slots. So the mistake is that you settle for these four storage slots because you think you can't possibly get any more slots with the carve. Well, you can actually do something to increase your storage and that is put a card in your carve and increase storage that way. You can't put a card in your car for the normal way, so you have to take a little detour, but it's quite easy. Just build a wall, then build a floor on it in a 90 degree fashion like this. The floor needs to be above the, above the carve, and then put a card on this floor piece. And if needed, reposition the carve a bit so it's perfectly beneath the card. Then remove the floor and voila, like magic, your card will fall in your carve. If you have a dock built on your map, then this will be even faster. So after you have the cart in your carve to your thing and when you're finished with your task and you're loaded with ore and want to return to your main base, you can try to get the cart of the, uh, of the ship by either using it normally or what I personally like to do is just destroy the cart and then the game will spawn the storage of the cart in boxes like this. And you can really easily move these boxes around, basically like a soccer ball. Get the boxes on the coast and if you afterwards still want a card to move around, just build it again and then put the materials from the boxes into the new card. And there it is, you just traveled more stuff than the card actually allows you by itself. Oh, by the way, don't fill up the entire card as it will be more difficult to travel with it due to its weight. Just fill it for halfway or something like this to make your life easier, which is plenty of storage anyways. Mistake number eight, not digging around ore deposits. Now, in my previous video, I showed you how deep ore can extend below the surface and that it's a mistake to prematurely stop your mining activities is when you don't excavate the surroundings of an ore deposit. If you dig out the perimeter of an ore deposit, you will pretty much get a huge block of ore. And now you will exactly know in what directions you have to mine as well as the depth of the node you're trying to mine. So you don't actually have to waste time chipping away in directions that do not have any ore. 
And if you do this with copper and it becomes a floating block in the sky, then you can actually make it rain copper when you mine it. So basically the entire thing will fall down if you mine it. And this also works for silver, by the way. For silver, it's way easier to dig around the perimeter as they are usually not as big as copper deposits. But since silver is too hard, you won't let it actually rain, but you will still have a good idea of how the deposit is generated. So you don't have to mine in directions where no silver ore can be found. Also, a uh, little bonus tip, if you don't want to be bothered by grey doors when you're mining copper, just build a fence or put some campfires around you as they are scared of fire, the little pussies. Mistake number 9, being reluctant with using or building outposts. Now many players think that you should return to your base every time you mine some ore or have export for a bit. However, sometimes it can definitely be more efficient when you just use or build an outpost. For example, if you use an outpost that is already there, far from your home just build a bed with a little roof and a campfire make sure there are no enemies around you and you can skip the night that is yeah filled with danger by sleeping in this bed and getting that nice rested buff another example is when you're exploring you're again far away from your home base but you just found this incredible mountain with loads and loads of silver you can actually just build a temporary base here nothing too fancy and it doesn't have to look good whatsoever Again, place a workbench, a campfire and a bed and you have yourself a base. Perhaps give it even some defenses and instead of having to travel back multiple times to transport the ore, you can just use your base to store the silver ore from this mountain until you're completely finished with it. You can even add a smelter, which is really easy to build. So you can smelt your ore while you go on small back and forth mining trips. This way you will basically do two tasks at the same time. And if you want to go a little further, then you can also just upgrade your gear on the go. For example, if you build a forge. And in the case of silver, it's especially useful as you can, for example, make the cape that will give you uh, frost resistance. So you don't have to use any meats anymore. So definitely consider making outposts here and there. Mistake number 10, playing on a seed that you hate. Well, this mistake sounds obvious, right? A lot of players will stick with their seed as the sense of progression made on that seed can make them unwilling to leave the seed. It's something like a sunk cost fallacy. However, in Valheim you can transport anything, meaning you can break down your entire base and just transport it to a better seat if you really hate your seat. Now there are a lot of amazing seats out there. I even made two videos about perfect seats that you can use if you want to swap over to a seat that's actually really nice to play on. Or the opposite, if you are bored of your seat, you can also play on a more challenging seat. I also made a video about that and I will put all the links in the description if you're searching for a particular seed. So in my opinion, don't stick to your seed just because the game randomly generated for you and you have played on it for the past 40 hours or something like that. And a final tip is to check out the Valheim map tool. You can insert any seed name here and with or without spoilers, check out if the seed contains something specific that you have in mind, like for instance, a maple. This way you will have some sort of an idea of the seed you're going to play on. So yeah, guys, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I want to thank all of my viewers and subscribers that left uh, suggestions on my previous video. I used a lot of your comments in this video for sure. So definitely keep doing that. And if you know more mistakes players make, then yeah, definitely just leave a comment and I'll use it for the next time. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Those two things help out a lot. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.